Hello everybody and welcome to another basing tutorial. I just wanted to go over some uh, a way here of doing some quick jungle bases, especially since these are from Archvillain. These leaves that look so spectacular, these are just part of the sculpt. So I didn't have to add those leaves, didn't have to do anything to those. They were just there and I painted them. I didn't have to add any kind of foliage of any kind. I thought, gee whiz, that's really looking so spectacular. Why not just a little bit of ground cover? And then there's these guys. These are from, uh, it's from Luke's APS. And I'll show you the packaging when we get down to it. But you can see some nice little kind of a mossy type of a thing here. And I thought it might complement this stuff really well. We also have from Luke's APS also some more ground cover right here. Now this other item we're going to put some of that on the rocks this is from woodland scenics i have been using this particular flock pretty much almost since day one almost day one of our miniature painting experience and here it is woodland scenics blended turf there's also a finely foliage i've used a lot of woodland scenics products over the course of the last geez 20 years 20 years of miniature painting and here we go so this looks aps now obviously overseas this is where you're probably going to get it in the U.S., Footsore North America has pretty much the full range of Luke's APS stuff. I've only had a chance to just you know, maybe use a tiny little clump of this stuff. This would be the first time I've really tried to use this in any larger way. So these Monto Riders, again, these are from Archvillain. What are these on? 90 by 52 mil bases, something around that, 90 by 55, something like that. Basically... Uh, 40k bike bases and for AOS some of the larger sort of monsters and again here these have all been painted on stream and I think I'll toss a link for you in the description to some of the highlights of these on the Twitch channel and this is the I, oh boy, I think this is August of 2020 a spectacular release actually I've been uh, there's some of the see those salon guys that look like on the right hand side i've just printed out some of those the matzo writers are in the middle i don't know if you can see some of those and then i've got those basically they're sort of like croxigors to the left and i'm trying to print out the bigger guys all in that back row so you're going to be seeing some more of the sagama rising stuff especially on the patreon page I, it's i love lizard man what can i say and again arch villain does some amazing stuff and actually this was the very first one that we painted on the twitch channel man this was <laughs> so much fun now i actually did a patreon video on one of these there's, there's four of these poses and one of them i did a kind of a multi-part painting series on the patreon page and well again I'll, there'll be a link to the patreon page all that kind of good stuff too now i also have i'm not sure how much of this we'll use but this fast drying basing glue it it's surprising what it can do i've I've been pretty impressed that and watered down. I mean, massively watered down. It still actually works. We have some super glue as well. We're going to have some, some of our maybe junkier brushes out there. This is a ground cover that I like to put right about here because I mean, it pretty much looks like dirt. <laughs> I mean, it really does. So I paint a lot less of the base. I pretty much just focus on the rocks. And so the rest of this stuff, I am not painting that because I'm just going to put this over the top. And well, then guess what? Some of this too. Enough talking. It's time to get some of this stuff on the base. We will begin here with this. It's not going to take very long. Then the bigger challenge is to move on to this right here because it's a little crumbly, as you can see. Uh, I don't know if, I mean, you could keep it in a moist place, but eventually it is going to get dried out. But uh, it will, as you can see, it kind of flakes off a little bit. You almost have to pre-flake it, <laughs> right, and then get down to actually applying it. But first up, we're going to try this stuff. And we'll just show you how that really, even just this, changes the look of these bases. Let's do that next. To get that flock around the edges here. What I'm going to do is take some of this Luke's APS, the, the fast drying glue, and here what I'm going to do is just put it in one of these. It's just a that's a just a cap bottle cap here. I'm going to throw some of it out here, 
and I've always been impressed at just how much water I can toss into the stove. So it's just a little dropper bottle of water here, and I'm going to, well, at least hopefully anyway, we're going to get some water into this. There we go. That might be a little too much. I'm going to take a little bit of water out of there, maybe put some of it back in. Like I said, I've been impressed at just how thin you can go with this. I only The only reason I even thought about doing this is just from watching watch him uh, doing his thing with his terrain stuff. Now I just have, again, a junky old craft brush. I'm going to throw a little bit more in there. The nice thing about this glue is it takes hold really fast, even when it's been thinned down like this. I've, there's no way I thought it could ever do that, but I saw him doing it, thinning it down. I think he even thinned it down sometimes with the, the old household 70% alcohol. So I want to get that out of harm's way. Or I can reach it here. I think you can see all the stuff. That's good. The reason why it's thinned down is because, see how it starts to set down into some of those uh, crevices there? Uh, in the old days, which is maybe not all that long ago, actually before, probably before I started watching him, I would have just kind of gone straight up wood glue, something like that, and not thinned it down like this, thinking that there's no way that's going to hold, but lo and behold, and I don't think I want to cover every single last tiny fraction of an inch of this either, but this just does a couple of things. It adds a little bit of color. You can see the color there. It adds a little bit of texture, way more than I could ever paint. I, I, I look at this, and I look back at how many years I was trying to paint this stuff there, and I said, so I, I could have just done this instead of trying to paint all that so that is uh, that's a lesson learned i mean i just i didn't know about this stuff at the time so you, know, you do what you can do these were all done with oils so what does that mean uh this didn't happen right until all the oils were dry of the three this one took the longest to dry because it was the only one where i really used the cadmium colors and the only reason I used those was because my homemade fluorescent paints are pretty much out, and I basically had to get some more powdered pigment. That's how much I've been using them. But look at, see, this is kind of neat how it just sort of sinks down in there. Here, let's grab this stuff. It's just an empty blister pack, by the way. Ah, look at that. See, it's a nice little compliment to the sculpted leaves. Tell you, if I knew something like mixer or blender, I would like pull those leaves off of there and make just build plates of these leaves because they're really nifty. Look at this. Okay. Look at this side. Look at that side. I mean, you could just go with that and we could just put some flock on top of that too. But the other stuff, I just wanted to try it and just, just see what happens. You, you never know. I might make a, a discovery one way or another. I may go, uh, that wasn't really worth it or i may go oh this yeah i have to get more of this stuff and use it all the time durability mm, you know is if you're using it on a gaming miniature will some of it flake off yeah it's gonna flake off but i mean most of it'll still stick around some will flake off but enough of it's gonna stick around to get the idea across especially if you just magnetize the bottom of these I actually, I did do, I, no, I did do a couple of uh, videos, at least one on magnetization on uh, for videos. Refrigerator magnets, rare earth magnets. I think those are the two main types. Back to more of this. See, I don't want to have it all just be the fine stuff. I want a little bit of the heavier flock to get in there too. All right, look at this. This is just... That already is sensational. I'm going to take uh, this guy here. I mean, look at that. It just, that was all of about four minutes or so. So it just, it's watered down. It's no big deal. It's really easy. Just a junky old brush. This stuff will get sticky or at least tacky within minutes. So that that's why I'm only doing a little bit here, and then getting the getting this done. If if it gets on you, you you want to kind of wash your hands. I mean, it's not it's not toxic or anything, but it it'll make your hands awful sticky. You go to touch something else, 
and then you're going to have that sticky residue on your hand and that's that's super thin down even at that super thin down level you'll still get that sticky stuff on you so just uh, lessons learned trying to pass those along to you so those don't have to be lessons you learn i did do a, a part of that video that i was telling you about the multi-part on this macho writer the bases and that's all three printed base the dinosaur lizard man and then the rider those see here this just went over the edge i was just about to get that with my hand and i said nope i don't want to do that with my hand because then my hand's going to be all kind of sticky so even here see that's that is going to be sticky along the base here so i got to be really careful i'm just going to have to use my hand to get rid of some of this that's how runny this is and see it's that super super sticky right here here, let's just get some of that away. And now, now what's going to happen <laughs> is that, uh, see that? See how tacky that got right away? I got to get this stuff off of here real fast because it was just going to stick on there. But yeah, now you can see I've got that residue on my fingers. See, nothing like showing you by um, doing it myself. Nothing quite like that. Welcome to my world of basing. But anyway, what I was trying to explain is that the printed bases kind of stopped right about here. And in the basing video, I just kind of showed how I meshed the two together using some a couple of different texture pastes. I think one was from Green Stuff World. The other one was from Vallejo. And the idea was just to fill in that gap which was around a quarter of an inch or so something like that around about a quarter of an inch okay so that that's good there one last one last base here so all of these rocks out here those were all added on via the paste and uh, some of the Luke's APS always oh, either wasteland or Mediterranean rubble or something like that. One of the two. All right, learn my lesson. Not going to push this any further. We're just going to get this out here and we're just going to put this on right away. So you, you saw how quickly that just started running around all over the place. So something to keep in mind. Also, ah, see right here, I'm just going to have to do this right away because as soon as I tip that over, that stuff's just going to want to run right off of there. Okay, that's that's good. That'll secure it in place. So I, I could just stop here, and this is something that I try to do in a lot of the different tutorial videos, especially the army painting. I'll say, okay, look, here, we, we did this one step. Potentially, it's either enough or for for temporary, right? You could go and play some games with it or whatever, whether it's a D and D figure or something for your army that you maybe want to just play test a little bit, see if you actually want it in your army or not for maybe an upcoming tournament. And maybe you don't want to necessarily paint all the rest of it. You want to say, look, is this unit or is this character or whatever going to really work? Or should I just not paint the rest of it and substitute something else? I've been there. I know what that means. Okay. So there you go. There is all of our ground cover in place. Eh, I might just do a little right there. So it didn't necessarily cover absolutely every, every last bit of this because... This is what's coming next. This is the big challenge. It, it could get a little messy. I'll tell you that right now. It could get just a bit messy. But let's play with this stuff next, see what happens. Ground cover is in place. Now we have this challenge here. Just a little aside as to the holding power of the super thin down Luke's APS glue. Somehow a tiny little bit of that glue was, I guess, stuck to my thumb here. And I went to move that little that little vat that I had of the glue, and just enough of it stuck to my hand, 
spilled it all over the place and it's I'm still trying to get that residue off my fingers. I've washed my hands for five minutes, still trying to get that off. So it's it's potent. Just just so you know. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Well, this is an obvious thing we're gonna do. Is just start doing this, just pulling away. Wow, that's quite the uh, it's quite the fern there. You know, I'm gonna actually get some scissors out here. And I'm just looking for see I don't I don't think I want that. I don't think I want that stuff or that. So potential. Nice little fern. We have a little saying that uh, was it that nothing replicates nature quite like nature. Well, here's some nature. I've been using bark and branch and all of the kinds of foliage stuff. And I haven't really ever bothered to seal it or do anything like that. No glycerin or whatever when I use the dried leaves. Have not messed around with any of that. Just haven't found it to be necessary, believe it or not. It's worked out pretty pretty well without it. All right, so what I've just done is cut some of this away. So maybe a little individual clumps. I'm just going to position these around this not so much not so much with that what what do we have here what's this what does this look like that's a little bit too much of a clump i'll just i mean even if i can find a place for it do i really want that that's <laughs> no that's that's not what i'm looking for what i will do here is start off by just doing this uh, and i was thinking that this might also lead to a a little less breakage of it. Might have just... Oh, no, that's not... Ooh, that actually worked out pretty well. It's not too shabby. So what I will do now is maybe... Maybe... Put one little batch off of here. See, the more of the brown area that I cut away, it, it, it starts to basically then break down into individual little pieces and I was hoping to keep some of those in actual clumps like that. So I get this off of here. I have my super glue. I have my super glue in place. Uh, sometimes you just have to do things like that and just position some stuff. See if you like it. I suppose I could use the Luke's APS glue also for this but i was hoping that this would be kind of an instantaneous hold okay so in place i'm not looking to cover the entire base with this thing just some parts of it Yeah, it's not going to work there. So what I, I might do is just I'll take this clump and I'll look around some of the other ones, see where that might work. What about that now? See, I, I, I don't want that growing out of the rock. I don't want that just growing out of nowhere. I, I would like for this to make some sense, this, this vegetation right here. So this is... That's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. I, I will see what I can do with that. Do I try to clump that up and have that over here? Nah, that sort of gets in the way of those two. So I'm going to go. There's a, an area out there that has nothing on it. This is sort of a flat little area right here. So that, this area is a is one of my targets right here. And I'm just going to see if I can't maybe get rid of. Uh, see, I, I cut off a little too much of the, the brown. So, again, a little bit of a lesson learned. What does this look like here? Does it... Uh, Do I want to cover up the painting there? I'll try this somewhere else before. Ooh, maybe this. Maybe this will work. Here. 
I think that's a better spot for it. I will try this. One one other air just as a nope. Mm -mm. Uh eh. there's that. Nope, I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna go right here and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna just press on that for a bit. Yeah, well, then the thing, too, is if it falls off right away, well, then it was just meant to fall off. And, you know, I can try another piece on there. Okay, so there's another little batch of this. And I thought here would be a interesting spot. Now, this has no support right there, but... It seems to be holding on relatively well. All right. There. So you see, I just kind of drop that to there. And what I was hoping to do, so I'm going to do that with a little bit more of this. I've got some of these little pieces like this, these, these strands. It's like I'm... I'm building a plant. I'm quite literally like, like this is my roots of it here. And then some of those, these longer, almost little viney things like these right here. That's where my finger is. And I'm just kind of positioning those on there. So I didn't want to just pull this out and throw it on there like, like a mat. That wasn't the, that wasn't the goal. See here we've got this brown dead stuff. What about this? see that hangs off too much which i think you can see where i'm going that's just pretty much just an invitation for that to just snap and break and will just generally cause some sad face you don't want sad face so there's another little clump of that that i'm going to put there leave it there don't mess with it i'm going back around to my uh, first one over here and let's see if we can find some more areas for this uh, it does offer uh, i think also to a little bit of a it's a warmer green as opposed to some of the the cooler greens that I already have in that foliage. Okay, this is definitely an area I wanted to target with some of this. So I'm gonna take this, stick that there. And what I would love to be able to do is have this thing go down in here. I could also use a bit of a thinner super glue for this, and sometimes I'll use this. Sometimes I'll grab a little bit of that and use that as a little bit of a binder to that. So here, I just want to make sure that gets stuck in here. Doesn't want to cooperate. It happens sometimes, which means I'm going to throw a little bit more of my foliage in there and now that that seems to want to hold that that might be a little long so i just cut off a bit of that and now i've got another shorter piece that i can use somewhere else one of my other bases here so i'll keep that off to the side Because there's still one more, I don't know if I want to call it a layer, but there's still one more thing I want to do yet, and that would be to take the that green flock from Woodland Scenics, and that would go over the, the rocks here, give it a bit of a mossy look. Okay, here's one more. One more area here that we'll just hit with this. 
Okay, and I'm just going to press it down with my finger here. If stuff falls away, stuff falls away. This is that one piece that I cut off. Ah, and stuck it in there just like a plant. I've got a couple more of those chunks. There's one. There's another. Let's see if I can't get just a bit more of this towards the front here. Again, I'm really focusing in on this this greenery here. I don't want uh, too much of the brown dead stuff. Yeah, I could throw some ground up tea leaves on here. There's any number of different types of vegetation that would work. I just saw this and I thought, ferns. How often do I get a chance to put actual like mossy ferns on things? Now, pretty much only when I get to do lizard man stuff. And well, this was just the perfect opportunity to give that a shot. I'm going to take a little bit off of here. It's going to go there. Well, one thing it kind of does is it provides a little bit of a backdrop to this leaf. See how it's, uh, it kind of frames that leaf there. Instead of that leaf just growing out of a rock, uh, it just, it's, I, to me, it starts to make that leaf look like it's part of a wider range of vegetation. So I've got some on either side of that. I, I don't want to overwhelm these things. I'm not looking to, again, cover every last square centimeter of this. I might... Put this piece right over here. This is between the tree root. Uh, again, to frame that leaf there. Do I have another nice little clump here of the green? Maybe right here to just kind of finish this off. Ah, that's a, there. There's a really long thing extended off the end of that. And it's like, yeah, I don't need that. There's this piece here that I was kind of hoping to plant. See, I've got like a little stem on the end of it there. See if this will work. And it does. Okay, that is looking a little bit too long. Uh, just looking to snip off that. Mm, no, I won't cut it down. I was just about to cut that down. I, I am going to add a little bit of a green, though, to the end of that. So I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of super gluing plants to plants here. And I'm not sure how much more of this I want to add. Yeah, no, I think that's about it. Uh, too much can be too much because we have this yet. Let's not go crazy. I could always put more on afterwards, but let's let's just say enough is enough with the that uh, the mat, the fern mats, and let's put some of this flock from Woodland Scenics on, and we'll do that next. The last little bit of thing we want to do here is that Woodland Scenics flock. That's the stuff right here. And what that will also do is we kind of have these isolated areas. Like it just ends very suddenly there. This is where we can maybe blend that area together a little bit better. Now, I did bring back the watered down Luke's APS. The one thing it will do with this flock is it can also tend to almost make it look white, right? It kind of soaks in. Uh, super glue doesn't do that, but super glue also can get very 
messy too. I'm just going to go with this, and the idea is watch what happens here. Because it's it's wet, right? Well, it's very moist and lots of water in it. See what I'm putting that right at the, the edge there? Now, a couple of things I could do is uh, here's some of that just leftover dust and, and stuff from the... So I could put some of that there, but what I would like to really use some of this. I'm just going to move this if you don't mind. And we're just going to scatter some of this now. I'm going to scatter some of that. Take off the extra. So see, it starts to blend it a little bit more now. We'll do the same. We just want to make sure I've got this. So it's not going to fall out of my hands. So you can see where the, the glue is concentrated. It's concentrating more towards the base of that plant there. And I just want to drop some of this down into it. And now it just looks like it's it's part of some other vegetation. I can even do this. Watch what's happening here. It's a little bit, a little bit brown, right? I actually have some step-by-step -step blog posts, uh, some terrain that I did, and it was I was using the moss, and I realized that the moss could be the fine branches that I put this flock on. So I basically made these things look greener by adding that flock to it. Now we talked about the rocks. Talked about those rocks. This is probably a good place where maybe water would accumulate. Oh, also, too, there's all this texture on here. So I just kind of figured, well, they probably meant that for that texture to be moss like this. Well, why not just use, why not use some flock? Bam, right there, some flock. And we'll do that elsewhere here on the rock. Not too much, not too much, but just enough. So see, now it looks overgrown. And it's so simple. It's so very simple, right? It's, this is not earth shattering. I don't want to lose all of the brown. So I'll put some of that over here. Uh, some of it's going to go here. And maybe even a little bit on my ferns. So remember we were talking about quite literally using those ferns as, as like a building block and, and planting stuff on it. That's kind of what we're doing right here. So see that the two areas of the brown, almost like dirt, are still there. And then this looks a little bit more green. So the whole thing just gets more of a vegetation look. Uh, at, least I, at least I'm thinking. I think it looks that way. Maybe others may not agree, but I think it looks that way. So the other thing, too, by adding this glue, it, it sort of strengthens the, those little plants that we threw on there. strengthens them and makes them look that much more more green and alive and see what i mean the the brush just stuck to that that's not what i was uh telling you this this glue really sticks like crazy all right i'm just going to stop right now and put this on here before that just has a chance to run all over the place Uh, now here I don't want to put this on the on the end of my ferns over there because they're not going to look very fern-like if they have all of that stuff on them. So oh yeah, that one really is uh, very nice. Let's move to this one now. Uh, this one's going to be a bit of a challenge because it's it's so tall here, and I'm just going to a little of this go down into those. Uh, crevices and here we go with our flock and it just it just blends some of this together very nicely see this stuff ended up looking a little bit brown a couple things it's going to do it's going to strengthen that but now it's also going to look a little bit more a little more greenish Gives a bit of extra greenery to it. And 
here's another area too where I, I don't want to cover up all of the well essentially dirt because then what was the whole purpose of putting that stuff on there there really wasn't much purpose was there so that's going to go all the way to the base of the rock and i'm going to get this stuff on there because i could see that was already starting to move so a bit of it here on this rock again the these are about as easy as you could possibly get to to deal with right you print out the rock you print out the lizard you print out the rider and all you have to do is just stick the rock to the base stick the lizard to the rock and then the rider to the lizard and you're done and that's all there is to it that's it so nice and easy Pile that stuff up right there again. We're going to leave that bit of dirt there. And I think I got one last area here of the rocks where I would like to have some of the, some of my flock here. So look at that that real wow i'm looking at these things i liked them as they were yeah you know, i had no problem with them as they were but boy this this does add a little something extra very excited about this okay so here again it adds some greenery and it adds a little bit of strength to this now Just put some of this is the again the the flock from Woodland Scenics. There's a kind of a nice sort of a brownish version. I think it's called ah uh, uh, boy. I wish I could remember what it's called, but it's got a little bit of brown to it. It's kind of a light brown, and I like to mix it with this so that because with a jungle setting like this, the bright green is fine. But in a lot of other instances, it's just a little too much. It's a little too bright green, so I like to tone it down. There is another uh, really dark, uh, very fine, uh, and it's really dark, that I'll sometimes mix with this to get sort of almost a, not necessarily a dark grass. Uh, well, there it is. There's the last of it on the table. Because, again, there was just enough of that glue stuck to my finger. That is testament to just how sticky that stuff is. And, well, what the heck, I'm just going to put a clump of it on here. Why not? There we go. Because it's all going to get covered anyways by this. Here, let's uh, a little more out here. Uh, leaving that open. Don't want to lose that bit of brown right there. And there's just pretty much this last little bit here with uh, what I haven't spilled yet. Fortunately, there's just a bit of this that I haven't spilled. And all it took was just the tiniest dot of that to get on my finger. And that's just how sticky it is. Now, I will have at the end of the video here as many kind of pictures as I can have just some of the finished results but if you really want to see lots of finished pictures that you just go to my Instagram just Wapelius on Instagram and I can even throw a link there for you that's where I really put the the finished images it's kind of a better place than on a YouTube video where you probably wouldn't really be able to see them very well anyhow but oh yeah that uh, really worked out very well. So I know that, uh, you know, this right here, uh, I'm just going to use some rubbing alcohol. Uh, Water is not really going to do very much. Rubbing alcohol will be just perfect for getting that picked up. But again, these are from Arch Villain here. So thank you so much to Arch Villain for well, making some really spectacular sculpts, right? 
and <laughs> now you could you could put a laughing symbol here or you could just uh, click the like button that would be nice you know do the with the subscribe thing click the bell the usual you've heard us a million times i don't really want to do it a million and one times in your ear you've heard that often enough but i would like to thank you for just watching this video and i hope this has been helpful for you using a couple of simple materials just a half an hour ish or so and i think we've really been able to dress things these things up give them some more color but more importantly a little more texture that couldn't necessarily be 3d printed so thanks again everybody and i'll catch you on the next basing video